Welcome to another episode of The Debrief, and this week I'm taking a look at these guys, the Brisbane Blaze, and specifically their number one penalty corner defence in the competition. So far, they've conceded 33 penalty corners this season and only been scored against on two occasions. Why? Well, let's take a look. Here's the feed, the wind-up. Hazel, it was charged down. Oh, we call it the short straw, and on this occasion, Luca Brown had drawn it. Yep, Luca Brown eats one for his team, but he's a big part of the reason why they've been so stingy so far this season. Let's take a closer look at this Blaze defensive unit, and I've thrown an old Kookaburra clip in here to give you a behind-the-goal look at a similar type of setup. It's called a 1-3, and the Blaze boys have run this variation 85% of the time this season. In this formation, your first runner is tasked with putting pressure on top of the circle. A good first runner will have an explosive first few steps, shuffle their feet when they approach the top so the ball can't sneak under them, and protect the left-hand side of the goal with a very tight running line. They've got to be brave as well. And Brown seems to have all of these qualities. That's why he's their number one guy. He's run out 73% of the time this season as the first runner. He also protects the postman in behind who is covering one half of the net, which in turn allows goalkeeper Mitch Nicholson to take a decent step to his right, suddenly making it very difficult for any drag flicker to score to his stick side. Your second runner will typically hold this space and is responsible for anyone running in from the right of screen. If anything sneaky happens at the top of the circle, they need to be alert and mobile enough to pressure there as well if needed. The headman is over here and has two main jobs. They need to keep an eye on deflectors from this area, as well as the push-out spot behind them. And once a shot goes on goal, they need to turn and sweep the pads of any rebounds in this space. Here's another example of the Blaze 1-3. And again, Brown does a great job of running a tight, brave line, and he blocks the flick. Notice the movements of the headman, Tim Howard, though. He's taken this role 64% of the time this season, and he can be a little bit soft with his pressure in this space, he tends to pivot to sweep the pads a little early, which could open up a variation like this. It's a reverse stick deflection, and the idea is as old as time itself, but I'm yet to see it rolled out against Brisbane. At the very least, it'll make Howard more accountable for his role, and then you start opening up passes potentially back behind him to the corner injector as well. Here's another clip highlighting the space that teams can utilise in front of Howard. We take another look and whoever's sitting one left of the corner batteries in this position needs to do more. But this first trapper is the one I'd be using to run the reverse stick deflection play. Here's an old clip of Eddie Ockenden scoring for Australia after starting as the first trapper and running in to take this deflection. If we go back to our initial setup, the player out here can run a great block on Howard and allow the first trapper a bit more time and space to sneak in front and score a goal much like Ockenden did. All of a sudden, Tim Howard goes from making zero decisions to having to make two or three in a space of seconds, potentially confusing this Blaze defence. Here's the only occasion Brisbane has lost a runner so far this season. I really don't know what Tassie was doing. They missed a trick here, but others shouldn't if the occasion arises again. The space is all to the right. So this variation is what I'd be running against a three-man Brisbane defence. Hell, I'd be running it against the full quota too. The other thing to keep an eye on is because Nicholson is offset to his right every single corner, there's always extra space to deflect into from down here. Corey Weir is on the post 76% of the time, and he only advances off his line when a two-goal attempt occurs, so I think this variation is really good. Speaking of two-goal attempts, here's a couple quickly. The Blaze still run a 1-3, but the only difference is Weir steps out from his post position to this spot in front of the goalkeeper. You can see the diamond formation, and all four players typically hold their spot and wait for the opposition to make the first move. A potential weakness in the system was uncovered by Hockey Club Melbourne here when they sent a raft of players into the attacking circle as passive blockers. You can see the Brisbane structure being pulled apart as defenders try and fight their way through the congestion to help make a play. It seems like whenever Adam Imer's in the second runner position, he's especially interested in attacking the ball and making a play. So he could be one that potentially could be manipulated with early ball movement and quality essential skills. But the real key is maintaining some width in the attacking circle and having a clear and concise plan of action before you get the ball. Here's an example of the trailer, tight or loose, whatever you want to call it. The idea behind the trailer is to provide an even bigger blockade on one side of the goal. And the trail runner, unfortunately, is usually just... Just a sacrificial lamb putting their body on the line. 
This variation is typically used against really good drag flick exponents or if you think there's an extra threat at the top of the circle like a swish, backdoor or a bunt. Now whether this is by design or not, Brisbane has done this four times this season and all four occasions have come when two of Brown, Michael Francis or Ethan White have been in the defensive unit. So make of that what you will. Ultimately, the Blazers' preferred defensive scheme seems to involve Luca Brown running first, Jake Wetton running second, Tim Howard in the headman position, Corey Weir on the post, and of course, Mitch Nicholson in goal. It's been a fantastic formula for them so far this season, but I'm yet to see anyone really challenge them throughout the Sultana Brand Hockey One League. <laughs>